All right, well, it is finally, and I do mean finally time. And that is time to test a blind shaker. All right, so uh, this is a cheap blind shaker I got off of Amazon. I ordered this thing exactly one month and one day ago. It took that long uh, to get this. So this thing, uh, made in China, and it literally had to be shipped over from China, and it took a while because you couldn't find these things in stock. So I made that video, you know, back then about, you know, whether shaking is better than some other distribution methods. And, you know, the comments were pretty clear that people really were interested in seeing whether the specific device, the blind shaker, contributed to potential differences. And so I thought, you know what? Um, I can do that. These things aren't that expensive if you get one of these, um, again, kind of knockoff versions of these things. And the problem was, is they're all sold out. Like you just couldn't find one because uh, the original Lance Hedrick video was so popular and caught on so fast that everybody ran out and bought these things. So um, I did buy one. It just took a long time to get here, but it finally showed up. So we're finally going to give this a test. Now, this thing is obviously a knockoff version. This is not a Weber. Um, I don't even know if the Webers are still in stock. Uh, so it is, you know, a cheaper version. I think this thing costs like somewhere around 25 bucks, I think is what this costs. Um, you know, and it's messing with it has a bit of a gap. So if I take this and I shake it, Hear that rattle. So we'll see. I don't know. I may get grounds coming out of the bottom of this thing. It just may not be very good. And so, yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, we'll see. I may have to pad the top. You know, I can put like a little pad in there to hold that uh, bell against the bottom. And then, you know, we'll do the whole thing. We'll see how it works and uh, find out whether or not uh, shaking coffee in a blind shaker makes any difference at all. Um, this thing suffered a little bit in shipping. It's got some some nicks. I, I'm assuming it is not going to be as well made as one of the Weber's. Although uh, one thing I noticed is Weber said that they were having to wait for a shipment before they could sell these again. And it looked like uh, theirs are also made uh, in China. So I don't know how much different these are in design. So anyway, with this thing, we'll just go ahead and get into it. Uh, I will run a test and we'll see. Does this uh, do any differently than, you know, any other method? All right, time to do some more coffee tests. And um, before I get going on the test, I have been using this thing a little bit, this blind shaker cup. And I just wanted to give some caveats some things I've noticed before I run this test, because I, I don't know, maybe my technique will be called into question here. But this is not a Weber shaker cup. Um, this is something I found on Amazon because the Webers were out of stock and frankly, they're expensive and I didn't want to spend that much money on a device that I'm not wholly convinced actually improves anything. Um, and so one thing about this is it may not be perfectly identical to the, the device that Lance Hedrick used. And so before I even do any testing, I am just going to acknowledge it's not the exact same thing. It's not made by the same people. It might not be made to the same quality. It could be slightly different dimensions. Um, one thing that I've noticed in using this is that I do not get good release from the coffee that I'm using. I get quite a bit of retention in this blind shaker. And that gives me some pause on how good of a job it can do with distribution because even what I'm showing you right now is after I've done quite a bit of work knocking the coffee out of this thing. Um, so my grounds just don't release very well. And, you know, at the beginning, I do want to say, look, if you're looking for a reason to, to criticize this test, there you go. This is not the exact same device. It could be made to different quality standards. I do think the inside of the Weber, from what I've seen, looks better polished. And so it might release the coffee a little bit better. However, they're going to shake coffee pretty much the same. It is kind of the same design um, overall, but I can't promise that it's identical. All right. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for a reason to uh, 
suspect anything that I do. Now, I haven't actually done any tests, so I don't know. This thing may turn out to, to have much higher extraction, but in my um, use so far, it, it hasn't actually done a good job visibly at, at distribution, but uh, let's give it a shot. Uh, other notes, I'm going to be using a different coffee for this test. I've got a locally roasted coffee. It's just a couple weeks out of roast, so it's good and fresh. It's a much higher quality coffee than I used in my previous test. Um, it's, it's not cheap, so I'll just say that. It is more of a medium, like, I don't know, second crack kind of roast, so might be a little bit darker also than what Lance used in his test. But uh, let's run some tests and, and we'll see what happens. So for this, um, and I'm not gonna be using this shot as data just because I'm gonna explain things as I go through, but how I'm gonna do this, I'm going to measure out and grind up a little over 18 grams. So I'm gonna do a touch more than 18 grams and then I'm going to, uh, after I grind it, reweigh and cut it down to exactly 18.0 grams. All right, so let me pinch this out. So there we go, 18.0 grams on my scale. Um, and that way I, I know uh, I'm gonna get exactly 18 grams on my dose. Uh, for WDT, I'm gonna be doing the same thing as normal, so I'm not gonna show that to you again because it's just WDT. Um, and so for the blind shaker, I'm gonna put this in. Okay, make sure that I get all that in, as much as possible. And I, look, I get a little bit of retention, but it's not too bad. So, then I'm gonna put it on top here, give her a shake, and I'm gonna aim for like 10 seconds. Good shake um, there, and I just put my hand there, because I always wanna see this thing is uh, not perfectly tight locked up, and so it's just making sure that no grounds uh, are coming out. So at this point, I will place it over this, and I'll show you what I mean, the inside of this thing. All right, you see how that coffee is kinda, I mean, it's stuck to everything. So um, give it a good tap to kinda try to release. It's still, you know, it's kinda bunched up on the side in there. Um, and that's typical, that's what I've kind of seen. So I'm gonna kind of knock this down a little bit. Okay, and so this, whenever you watch the videos, they just take this thing and they kind of spin it and the coffee releases from this thing. But again, I, I've got it all, it just ends up all piled up. And so that could be just the coffee I'm using has a tad bit more moisture or something in it, but I definitely don't uh, get just the perfect uh, grind distribution right out of the way. So you give it a shake, all right, because that's kind of how they show it in the Weber video, just a little bit of a shake. Now I'm gonna tap this down a bit because I still have stuff stuck to the sides. And here is what a typical bed looks like coming out of the shaker. Um, in my experience, again, this has been what I have seen and that's why I have doubts because it is not very level. Um, you know, you can try to level it out some, but I mean, again, it, it's just not not visually perfect. Now, I'm not saying that this is not going to work because, again, I haven't done any tests, but that's just my first comment on these things. Uh, they have not given me with the coffee I'm using that nice, pretty, perfect bed that I kind of see in the videos. Now, it, at this point, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, tamp it and go with it because, again, that's the test. I, I'm not doing anything else. I'm just going to try the shaker cup. So we get our tamps. I'm gonna be using a puck screen, because I always do, and there we go. You know, got my puck prepped. So with this, I'm gonna shoot for roughly uh, 40, I think 45 grams output is what he was using. Um, I'm only gonna do 40 because I don't actually like mine to run that long. Um, and so I'm gonna try to shoot for a pretty standard 30 second shot with a 40 gram output from an 18 gram dose because that's, that's typically what I do with my own espresso. All right, so after I pull a shot, I'm going to be measuring this with my DI Fluid R2 Extract. Um, I've got it calibrated to zero on the water that I'm using. Give this a little stir, see what we get out of this. And so this is showing uh, just under 9.5% um, total dissolved solids. And given, so this ended up uh, a little over 40 grams, like 41, 42 grams on this. 
um, that's putting us about 22% uh, extraction yield. And so that's kind of what I'm shooting for baseline. Um, so we'll see how it goes whenever I run the actual test, uh, because again, this is a, just a warm up shot, dummy shot, um, getting the grinder dialed in, making sure that it does what I want. And so we'll, we'll kind of see what happens from here. But with that, um, I'm going to start pulling shots, taking data. I'm going to do eight shots WET, eight shots blind shaker. I'm going to alternate back and forth. So I'm going to do WT, blind shaker, WDT, blind shaker, just to try to randomize them a little bit. And again, eight shots with each, and then we'll see if there's any difference uh, in the shot time and extraction yield uh, with these two methods. All right. Well, uh, just finished up the test and ran some numbers. Um, so just to cut to the chase, I did not find any difference um, on extraction yield. I also checked flow rates and there was no statistically significant difference in flow rates either. Uh, so let's talk about some errata um, on this and just some things I noticed before I get deeper into the analysis. Um, all right, so number one, uh, the blind shaker I don't like using it. It, it kind of sucks to use, and I'll explain why. Um, and now part of this could be because, like I said, I got a knockoff shaker. So this is not the Weber. Um, this is a cheaper knockoff version. So it may be a little different, but this thing had a lot of retention. And um, it's, I would just have to, I had to do a lot of work to, to get all the grounds into the basket. So part of that, I do think, you know, maybe it's better with the actual Weber. It may be more polished inside. However, that said, uh, I still think this thing just does a poor job at distribution. Um, in the video, like Weber put out, you know, they take the thing and they spin it and the grounds just fall off. And they, it's kind of funny in the video, I'm pretty sure that it, it doesn't look like it was real. It looks like they kind of, it was a, it was an advertisement. Uh, they pull out this nice flat uh, surface on their grounds in the portafilter. Man, this thing leaves like a lumpy surface. And I just found I had to do a lot of extra help for the blind shaker to get a nice even bed prior to tamping. Um, and overall, I just felt like it, it just took a lot more hassle to use this. Um, and it was much more inconsistent to use it than WDT. Now, part of that's because I use WDT every day. So take that into consideration. But again, I will not be using this thing because I couldn't find any difference. And it just seems much more fussy to use this thing. So that said, uh, what else did I notice? Um, it's my, my shots pulled faster than I wanted. Um, let me look. The overall speed averaged like 24 seconds and they kind of got faster toward the end. I did notice um, the flow rates for the blind shaker. It seemed more variable and it was faster. Um, so yeah, it, now it wasn't statistically significant different, but it was kind of on average running a little faster. It did run a bit less consistent on flow rates compared to WDT. Um, so numbers wise, um, I averaged high 22s, just under 23% extraction yield. Um, I ended up getting average output of 41.4 eh, grams. Uh, so it was a little bit more um, than I wanted on that. And so the yield was slightly higher than I wanted on the puck. Um, part of that was because my flow rates were a little faster and it was harder to stop them um, where I wanted. But, you know, the the high to low, my highest shot was only like a 42 and my lowest was like 40 and a half. So, I mean, it wasn't really that big of a spread. Um, the shaker, blind shaker, 22.89% yield. WDT 22.98. So WDT and raw numbers was ever so slightly higher yield, but again, no statistical difference. Um, variability was pretty similar. Um, in the raw data, the blind shaker was a little uh, more variable in extraction. However, I did pull some extra shots because some of the shots uh, I felt like I didn't capture the data cleanly. And if I clean it up, um, the shaker was slightly more consistent, but again, uh, no statistical difference. So it did not pull higher extraction. Um, no matter how I cut the data, it pulled less extraction. Although again, 
no significant difference. Um, on the flow rate, it did pull higher and have more variable flow, but again, no significant difference no matter how I cut the data. That said, one of the other kind of things that I will point out, out of, out of 10 shots, and actually out of the first eight shots, I actually had three squirter shots with the blind shaker, and I had none with WT. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that that was channeling or something, because it could be something else, but it, it didn't seem to be happening with WDT, and I was getting some pretty bad squirters at times with this thing. So that, again, just take that into account. Um, I did notice some, I, I would say, subjective differences that subjectively this thing seemed worse. Um, the bed wasn't as nice. It seemed to have a bit more lumps and a bit more clumping. It was harder to use. I seem to see more squirts. And again, I'll stop short of calling that channeling, but it just didn't seem to do as good a job. So I am not gonna be using this thing going forward. I'm gonna stick with WT because it seems to be more consistent subjectively. Um, and it, there doesn't seem to be any benefit to using this one statistically. Uh, so I, I know, look, a lot of people, and, and I included, ran out and bought these thinking maybe they would work differently and maybe we would really see something, but I'm just not seeing it in my data. Um, so if anybody else is, is willing to do more testing, please replicate this, see what you find. And I know some people say, well, it's not the Weber, it's not the $80 one or whatever, however much that thing costs. Um, I, I'm not going to test another one. Um, I just don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth spending the money to test because this thing, it might not be as polished, but the shape, it looks visually identical. Now, I, I'm not saying it is dimensionally perfectly identical, but again, we're starting to really get into trying to find a reason uh, for a difference when, again, this is my second test of this thing. And in both tests, it, it's shaking just doesn't show any difference. If anything, it shows a slight worse extraction yield in my testing. So um, that's, I think, uh, all I'm going to say about this. And again, right now, as of now, I don't plan on doing further testing of blind shakers or, or any other um, shaking. It, it just doesn't seem to be worth it to me. So uh, that's it. I'll, I'll upload my data um, below. I may just put it in the description because it's really not that much. It's just, you know, I did 20 shots. And so I can do a little CSV output and just put that in the description and it will probably fit. So I'd love to hear your feedback. And again, if anybody else has tested this, what did you find, right? And again, my technique, I'm not gonna say it's the best, but if, if you found similar or different on that, I would love to hear what you have to say about it. So that's it for me. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks.